That Uh-oh. sounded weird. Uh oh, whoa. Are you getting beamed up by aliens right now? <laughs> that sounded kind of rad, but scary. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, he's merging with the internet, Christopher. Have you seen Lawnmower Man? Have you seen, have you seen, seen Lawnmower Man? Have you seen Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future? He's being digitized by Lord Dread. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit, man. That that scared the shit out of me. For, uh, for real? Like, the whole, like, digitization thing? Oh, you actually know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that scared me. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Like, I was like, is that worse than death? What we're hearing is, like, a, like, like if ghosts were trying to communicate to us through AOL, <laughs> through America Online. <laughs> through America Online on dial-up in 1996. Yeah. That's, that, that's what you sound like right now. We, we actually can't hear anything. We just hear... User beams. Good afternoon, and welcome back to Alpha New Merrick, the weekly podcast where we review every episode of Reboot ever in order, starting from the beginning. I am one of your hosts, Chris Siege. And I am one of your other hosts, NeoCal. And I am the other other host, Aiden Snyder. And this week on Alpha Numeric, we are reviewing the sixth episode of Reboot, uh, titled In the Belly of the Beast. It originally aired on December 3rd, 1994. Cal, why don't you get us started on the episode? All right. At the beginning of this one... Let me see here. We are at... Sorry here, I watched this uh, yesterday, not today. Um, but things usually either start at the Silicon Tour or the diner, so I'm thinking this one starts at... Um, none of the above. None of the above, am I wrong? Oh, I'm wrong. Doesn't it start at, like, Old Man Peterson's? Old Man Peterson's data dump, yeah. Yeah. That is true. You were kind of right, though, because, like, you do see the Silicon Tour in frame. Okay, I'm caught up now. Yeah, <laughs> you see the <laughs> Silicon Tour in the in the frame there. And this is the first time they've mentioned him a, more than a few times. This is the first time we meet, meet old man Pearson, and uh, he has an Irish accent. <laughs> or something like it, yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. some kind of accent from that uh, that region. Yeah, is it like like Scottish or Irish? I thought it was Scottish actually. Oh, uh, it, it kind of switches. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's yeah. UK-ish, okay? <laughs> Some quality voice acting right there. Uh so uh yeah, we're at, and slash we're at... are like hanging them upside down and shaking coins out of them. <laughs> not not literally actually. I think they're just like Holding him and uh, Megabyte is like, yeah. What is he Meg- doing? He's Megabyte's on a vid window while uh, Hack and Slash are restraining Old Man Pearson. Oh right, and... they're interrogating him for something. Yeah, and Megabyte is basically just all like, uh, "Oh, are you holding out on me, motherfucker?" <laughs> and uh, Old Man Pearson is like, is all like, "No, I told you." Give you all I got, Captain. Charity, charity, char. You'll never get information out of me. <laughs> That's uh, basically the gist of this interaction. <laughs> yep. And uh, <laughs> uh, Megabyte says to says, "Get me the log ha- to," or he says, "Get me the log hack to hack and or slash." And whoever, whichever one he says it to, is the wrong one because that one corrects him and is all like, "I am hacked." Slash is over there. I am Hack. <laughs> I am Slash, and he is Hack. Uh, I'm which Lou, is weird because Hack and Slash, we're we're subservient, and me, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Megabyte's attitude is just like, I don't care. Just bring up the log. Which, uh, 
I, I yeah. love this recurring joke because, as I've mentioned on previous episodes of the podcast, I legitimately don't remember which one's which ever. Like, and there's no reason to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe at this point, like, I'm just kind of rotundo about it, but like, <laughs> I just can't grasp like which which one is which. It just it doesn't stick with and me, and it will never matter. <laughs> never ever. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, so the log is, so what Megabyte is looking for is some sort of old, quote-unquote, unformat command. Yeah. Which, is that a thing? I've never heard of unformat. Well, the unformat command is wordplay on disk formatting. Um, I just brought it up here. Uh, The process of preparing a hard disk or other storage for medium use uh, by... Typing format in MS DOS, it erases a hard disk contents. Well, I I, I know what uh, formatting a hard drive is. Um, I've done it many times in my life. I've just never I've never heard the term unformat. Yeah. Before. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's just uh, play on words because yeah. it's like right. Yeah, because like the the act of formatting yeah. a drive is completely erasing yeah. it. So how do you so like unformatting it would be reversing that process yeah it's um yes it would be but it doesn't seem boring like, something that, it's yeah. just a play on word <laughs> yeah but it doesn't words. seem like that's what this thing does so <laughs> yeah we'll never know but i do know what it does to dogs and 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 an unfortunate binome that uh that found it <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, to get to what to Aiden, what to Aiden is saying, um, basically, old man Pearson's like, oh, it must have slipped my memory. And uh, he, he ends up turning to the binomes in Hack and Slash, and he's like, there's a reward for anyone who finds it. Oh, yeah. And that's after they're all like kind of just lazily digging through like the dump. Yeah. The giant JPEG stretched across the, the ground of the dump. <laughs> um, and one of them finds a, a spring and they're like, is this it? <laughs> um, I, uh, we probably should mention that as the uh, at the very beginning of this scene, as the camera was panning down uh, through old man Pearson's data dump, we, we actually saw that Frisket was kind of hanging around on some like platform watching oh, what was going yeah, on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's important because that will become relevant very soon. The entire episode. So Cheers. one of them does find it. And it's like a little crystal thingy. And he's like, yay, I found it. I'm the best. Megabyte, will you give me a reward? And Megabyte's like, hack slash, give him his reward. And they, uh, after they charge it, one of them literally has like a cell phone charger tucked in his sleeve, and they charge up the crystal. Do you guys? Do you remember that? They like pull out a little charger and like charge up the crystal, and they're like, "Full capacity, it's working." Yes, sir. And they point it at the binome, and a beam comes out, and he falls apart. He's not deleted. He's just like in all of his chunks. Uh, yeah, so I guess it just, but I, like, but hack and slash fall apart like every episode, so I don't see the including this episode <laughs> <laughs> at least once. So I don't see. Does it do anything more than that, or is the am I overthinking it? It's uh, yeah, I'm overthinking it. It's vague. <laughs> it's a little vague. As to okay. what this thing is. <laughs> this thing is like the epitome of a MacGuffin in storytelling. MacGuffin. Uh Christopher. Christopher's the, the writer man. He'll he'll explain what that is. Uh so a MacGuffin is a object in film or television that exists solely to drive the plot forward. Yeah. Um the most uh one of the most like on the nose examples of a MacGuffin is like, well, one, anything from an Indiana Jones film (laughs) or uh, like say the, uh, the briefcase in the, the trunk of the car in 
Pulp Fiction. Uh, the golden briefcase. So it's an object that like characters are after simply because it moves the plot along. But like what the what the object is and what it actually does really isn't all that important in the end. Yeah, it's not important or um it's well, often not even is it not, <laughs> Yeah, th- there that's what I was trying to s- stutter out. It's it's not important and often there's no necessity of uh there's no need to explain it either. So and this, that's what we got here. <laughs> yeah, so this unformat crystal is a quintessential MacGuffin. Yes. There you go. I love egg MacGuffins. Terrible, I know. Oh, God, what was yesterday? Cal, what was yesterday's word? Something doodle? Oh, when we were... <laughs> let's Let's forget about <laughs> yesterday's <laughs> word. Um, we, we had a, we were a little bit insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were. What was it? Foppa doodle? Yes. Foppa doodle. <laughs> Close enough. Foppa doodle do. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what's going on here? So in the dad, I have no mouth and I must scream. (laughs) Yeah, Bob's there. He's presumably the one that operated this machine. He ain't no fop doodle. (laughs) Fop doodle, there you go. (laughs) Okay, so for the listeners now, you got to explain what fop doodle is. For for the listeners and Aiden. I wasn't there yesterday. (laughs) So we went a little bit insane with our Beast Wars podcast because the episode is probably the weakest episode in the show so far. So we just made it more fun than it actually was. And there is a there's a clone of Dinobot on that episode, but he can't transform. And he's a very terrible actor. Whenever he's trying to sell something to the Maximals, because he's pretending to be Dinobot, he goes way over the top and he throws his claw over his like forehead and he, he gestures wildly and he's nothing like Dinobot, basically. And we just started doing in like a ye old ye old English like really bad like like thespian like wannabe voice. And we just started like uh one of the words I remember from high school, like Shakespeare plays was fop doodle. <laughs> And uh, Christopher and looked it up, and it's like, yeah, and he died. And <laughs> he looked it up, and it was like, uh, like a, a peasant or a foolish man or somebody of ill importance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an old, that was an old timey swear word that means insignificant fool or stupid person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that must be it. When I hear people like call someone a fop, I guess it must be short for fop a little. Oh, yeah, because I you've I, heard people call someone a fop. I have heard people call people fop, and I think it. Yeah, and I think in this case it was a movie that was. I think it was British, and it was. Oh, there you go. It was. It was like a few decades ago or something like that, and someone was just like, "Yeah, bloody fop," and I was like, "Oh, that's a that's a word." Okay. I I googled fop, and um, it looks like a man who's overly concerned with his appearance and clothes and accessories. Oh, that too. Okay. To an excessive way. Uh, in Africa, they oh. call them dandies. Yeah. Somebody that spent like thousands of dollars on like bright colored like suits. Uh, yeah. Man about town, a dandy, you know, like, you know, a yeah. A dandy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a dude. Yeah. The, or- the original uh, meaning of the word dude, basically. Other than being oh. uh, a, a horse dick. Yeah. What? Well, I'm, I'm learning a bunch of stuff. Okay, so okay, so so there's back an original, in the... <laughs> there's an original meaning of dude. Ba- yeah, basically, back in the the days of the old west, a dude was a well dressed and usually well off city man who would come to like who who would show up in a small town out west to try and be a cowboy, essentially. Uh okay, okay. So people from Alberta. <laughs> Yes, a dude. To dude, it's also a verb. It's a noun, a man, a guy. It's also a verb, which means to dress, 
to to dress up elaborately. It's a donkey, uh, right? I think. Is it like dude, like another word for like donkey or something? Hold on, I'm learning this here. Are you thinking of dude ranches? Am I? I no, no. I, I somebody a long thing. time ago told me that it was uh, another name for a horse's dick. So, oh, that sounds like a high school um, urban legend thing. Yeah, because I, I, here's dude here. Uh, dude is what you call someone when you aren't sure about their name. It's also hold on. Mm. I remember the thing going around school was that dude was like, like, like a donkey's butt. <laughs> Okay, so a dude ranch, uh, noun, in the western U.S., a cattle ranch converted to a vacation resort for tourists. Oh. So that actually, you, you like... bring that, them there and they ride horses and, yeah. Yeah, so that plays into the whole, like, like city slicker meaning oh, behind dude. That kind of just blew my mind, yeah. So a dude ranch is city slickers coming to... By the way, city slickers movie. Oh, great movie. Oh, great movie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I actually just rewatched it. Uh, I have it on Blu-ray. I just rewatched it like maybe like a year or two ago, and it holds up really well. Awesome. What's up with the deal um, with people not sucking poison out of each other? Come I, on, I, man up! I wow. Uh, I <laughs> I uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the whole dude thing that actually clears it up for me because ever since I heard that, and I heard people refer to dude ranches or dude this or dude that, and you know. I was thinking about like disgusting things. So that's on you, man. I'm very glad. No, it's on whoever the fuck told me this like years ago. <laughs> High school is a terrible place. Yes, espe- especially a- before the internet. It's a terrible place for terrible people and false falsehoods. Well, it sounds like we've all, like all three of us have already learned things this on is, this podcast. Here we this go. is great. I'm enjoying yeah. this. This is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, speaking dude. of dude, Bob's here, <laughs> and he's he's crushing. <laughs> Great segue. He's crushing. <laughs> he's crushing it, literally. The viral binomes are after him, and Bob yells, "Uh oh, time to jam!" Oh, because they're in a hover tank. Yeah, and they're they're fine. Which... They're firing after him. I remember, like, when I watched this uh, a few hours ago, I was like, "Wait, time to jam? Does that mean like leave?" Yeah, I've, nev- I've I've never heard anyone use the word jam. <clears throat> that, in that's that, uh, more old timey it- slang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard it ever since this episode came out. Huh. And I've heard jams referred to as swimming trunks, pajamas. What the? Uh, yeah. Like, hey, you got some fresh new jams? You know, like that means like, hey, nice, nice new clothes. I thought it meant music. Well, that's also to jam, yeah. That's like, that's um, it's a music huh. thing, yeah. I know it's also like NBA incredible. Jam. Yeah, you can eat jam. Uh, a photocopier can jam. I love jam. Yeah, paper jam, fruit jam, jam jam. You can jam until you boom shakalaka. <laughs> yeah, and go on fire. <laughs> wow. Go on fire. <laughs> You can space jam. Yeah, you can slam jam. Uh, slam into jam. a slim jam. <laughs> slam, slam into a slam jam. Slim jam. <laughs> slam into a slam jam. <laughs> slam jam a lama. <laughs> oh my. And, uh, what we're re- constantly referencing yeah. with this gobbledygook is a video game called Jam um, NBA Hang Time. <laughs> Okay. That had a lot of jargon, like b- basketball jargon in it. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about NBA Jam. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, sorry, I, yeah. NBA, NBA Hang Time was like the sequel to it. NBA Jam was the original, I think. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know that they were connected at all, but I don't I, also don't they, know enough I, about I, it I'm to actually I'm very sure disagree. that they are. <laughs> <laughs> you could go you could get on go on fire 
right? If you got like scored three times in a row, oh, you could like do like seven flips is... up in the air and slam it into the ground. This is ringing a bell. Yeah. How is this? Yeah, an, that... Is this an old game? That yeah, yep. those are all things you could do in NBA Jam. Yeah, right. and, and NBA Hang Time was the same, except you could make your own character. Awesome. It was like the '64 release of it. I want to go on fire. <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay. Belly of the Beast. N- <laughs> NBA NBA uh, Hang Time is a 1996 basketball arcade game developed and released by Midway. That's hang right. Time was the third basketball game in the NBA Jam series. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Learning. Some Nintendo 64 history. Continuing to learn. <laughs> yeah. All, all the oh, learning. All so the what's learning. actually happening on the show? Bob defeats the I have completely hover forgotten. tank, right? <laughs> Bob defeats yeah. the hover tank? Bob, How? Bob lures them. He's ch- the, he's being chased by the thing, and he, he goes, there's like a big hydraulic hammer, and it's compressing everything. And, you know, like it's on a conveyor belt. The thing that Enzo almost died in last episode. Um, oh, yeah, literally. Yeah, and so... He basically, yeah, he's zipping around on a zip board and the hover tank oh. is so close to him and he just lures him right into that area They're where compressed into like a block. it gets crushed and flipped onto a platform. And if you think that Bob is a murderer, <clears throat> um, you actually see the squished up binome inside the blink. I know, that was pretty classic. Weep, weep. That was probably and, an uh, ABC yeah. mandate, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, probably. Yeah. BS and P. Pump up the jam. <laughs> you so, settle down over there. <laughs> so, you settle down over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we? So we cut back to uh, Hack and Slash trying to pry their way out of this giant claw. That Bob had trapped them in. And, and they drop the crystal. In doing so, they drop the crystal. The unformat command. <laughs> and because Frisk gets a, a bad dog, they're like, hey, don't touch that. Get away from that. And he kind of looks up at them. Nice doggy. Because Frisk is here. Yeah. And he's like, well, fuck you. And he <laughs> eats it. Typical. Just wallows it whole. Typical. Like this is the size of like a bowling pin. And he just like gobbles it down. <laughs> like I'm amazed this dog is still alive. Oh well, wait till wait till later in the episode where he becomes not alive. No, 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 no. He doesn't become an ex dog. <laughs> He's. <laughs> uh, I wanted to use it. Uh... Well done. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Hack and, hack and slash fall on the ground very cartoonically. <laughs> very. And then instead of seeing stars after they hit the ground, they see little versions <laughs> of themselves. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad one of you brought that up yeah. because if not, I was going to. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. And Bob, Bob's just, hey, Flappin' Jack, <laughs> I thought I told you to get lost. Yeah, and they're like, hey, we're not Flappin' Jack. Flap. He is Slap, and I am Slack. <laughs> <laughs> slap and Slack. Okay. I and thought then... they would have said Slap and Stick, but <laughs> that's two on the nose, I guess. And then they uh, they get crushed by this uh, mechanical the claw, thing. Yeah, yeah the, the claw, yeah. It's Bob. It's who Bob actually who actually crushes it. them with it. They're already <laughs> down and like not a threat. And he's just like, eh, let's make it harder to put you back together. And after he crushes them, he's just like, yeah, I know. Yeah. After they were like, <laughs> like talking about their names. Yeah, that, yeah. But uh, the one we've all forgotten about until this very second is Old Man Pearson, who, poor guy, is still hanging upside down, tied up by Hack and Slash. Yep. And, and then we cut to the Silicon Tour and Megabyte. Oh, there's a little sound bite that goes do 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 do. Like a weird little like Irish jig like oh. tune. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Potatoes. Um Yeah. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> hey. Hey. You're potatoes. an all-star. 
No, no, no. Uh, no, so, no, Megab- no. so Megabyte is in his uh, ball joint hover chair in the Silicon <laughs> Tour, <laughs> looking at a, uh, a vid a window. Schematic of Frisk, uh, uh, it looks like. Yeah, and under Frisket's name, it. I, I just want to point out that it says Caninus Maximus. <laughs> yeah, he's, wow. a big, he's a he's a big doggo. He's a big doggo. Yeah, I yeah. like it. It's like power level, and there's like a gobbledygook pie chart that means nothing with a whole bunch of percentages <laughs> on it, <laughs> and a bunch of binary specifications. Yeah, it's great. Where is it? I'm not even going to bother to ever typing that binary in to the internet. So <laughs> I'm sure it says something about him being a good boy. Unformat.com. <laughs> so a dog ate my unformat command, and me, hack and slash are in, are literally in pieces at his. Yeah, how they get at, there? I don't know. They scoop up? <laughs> <laughs> Probably scooped up by the viral binomes. Who puts them all, together? They're all like, "Oh, screw this! I'm not doing this today." So they just dump them down. Yeah, they don't put them back together. Screw this. So I guess um, he's like, well, there's one way to get the dog. And they're like, grab the dog. And he's like, no, you fools. Enzo. Bring me and I'm the like, boy. okay. Is the dog so hard to handle that they have to like lure the dog by kidnapping Enzo? Yeah, it's, yes. it, yeah, yeah, it's a actually. weird plan. <laughs> it, it, it's a weird plan, but... It's kind of. Because like Enzo... Uh, they're also right? Yeah, because like... Frisk gets a beast. He is, yeah. as we find out. Yeah, yeah, but like, well, he's. I do have a point. I, I do have a point to raise on this front, but uh, I'll raise it when we get there later in the episode. <laughs> All right. So Cecil is like, they're cut, at the diner, and Cecil's like, diner, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How does one put this delicately, Bob? You stink. Oh no, Bob, Bob walks in and he says, before all that, he says, hey, bet you can't guess where I've been. Oh yeah, Which why is did weird. I say that? <laughs> I know. That's weird. That's a to, weird thing to, to say. To, to Cecil. I was like, why? Why would you instigate that? And Cecil is all like, miss your Bob. But uh, how do I put this delicately? But you do have a distinctive aroma. <laughs> Oh, um, you you're, stink. Uh, <laughs> you stink. I was, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, waiting for you. Them. Yeah. <laughs> there, your, uh, your makeup um, binomial is in the background, Aiden. Oh, yeah. Hey, there she is. With like the big hoop earrings. Oh, and... yeah. Or is that a different one? That's yeah, the same one. I don't know, yeah. but I like, I like I know, it. I know my binomials. I know my <laughs> binomials. <laughs> I, yeah. I know my makeup binomials. I just realized that they like actually animated Bob's fingernails and they're white. What? Think they look painted white. Weird. I had not noticed that before. Huh? Dots are black and his are white, but they look painted white. Interesting. Uh, Oh yeah, there they are. That's interesting. Right. (laughs) So, and uh, a sick doggo comes in the diner. He's green. Like he's all green and he's burping and farting. He kind of stumbles and just kind of melts to the floor, and all the binomes are freaking out because Frisk gets in the in the house. Um, my subtitles because Cecil speaks French here when he's trying to usher the dog out. The subtitles say in brackets, um, "urging in French." <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't actually tell me what he he says. I like how he's like getting sick for one. Sorry, but you have no reservation. <laughs> Wait at the bar. Wait at the bar. <laughs> Wait on the floor. Wait yeah, on the floor. And Dot's like, he never comes inside. Something must be wrong with him. And I'm like, Captain Obvious. <laughs> like he's green. <laughs> like, does, but, okay, so I was wondering about this earlier, though. Like, does he never? Come inside because I feel like we've seen him inside the diner before. I think he's always waiting outside. He's a good dog. Mm. Mm. He might have he might have popped in at one point. It's hard to tell Enzo and Frisk get apart sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is really weird. So he, he goes over and he's like, come on, boy, let me have a look at you. And he trusts Bob enough that Frisket opens his mouth and then something horrifying happens. Yeah. Pops the hood. So, yeah, <laughs> Bob the reaches hood underneath <laughs> The, into the dog's mouth and literally pops Frisket's hood. <laughs> there's like, and the top of his snout opens up and there's like a V8 <laughs> like engine. engine inside. Yeah, like fucking muscle car <laughs> engine. And then he, <laughs> and he, he even like revs it. He puts, uh, yeah, he presses the valve <laughs> on the intake. Well, now we know how he growls. Yeah, I guess. yeah. The fuck? Uh, how do you like that, Aiden? It's It's great. <laughs> And now I have so many questions. Like, do they all look like that inside? Do they all have, like, weird mechanics? Dogs? <laughs> Probably. Like the sprites, too. I have a cat. I don't know anything about dogs. <laughs> I don't know anything about Just dogs. Just dogs in it's general. about dog maintenance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dog maintenance. You know about <laughs> car maintenance, though, right? It's the same thing in this world. Well, you know, my, my, my cat doesn't have a V8 engine inside of him. It's weird. Too bad. Yeah. Be so much I like how I like how Bob takes out like <clears throat> opera binoculars, like dainty ass like weird opera binoculars, and apparently it's like a medical. Oh like, yeah, the view scope. View scope. Well, it's, it's glitch, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's glitch. And, He's all like um, glitch uh, view scope. Yeah, so I guess it lets him see inside him. I guess I because never made he finds the... out what it is. I guess I never made the connection between that and uh, opera glasses until you oh, said something. Just, it does that's kind of look I... like it, but yeah. It, it does. It, I see it. Now that you bring it up, I do see it, but it... Uh, oh, didn't... my. <laughs> <laughs> so <Yes>. he's... <laughs> and uh, he's wearing a powdered wig, enjoying the opera, and he's like, there's an unformat in his stomach. Or unformat command in his stomach and then he... and we'll have to what does he say he will have to, we'll have to let it pass naturally and hope for the best and then he turns yeah. glitch into like a us like a star trek like <clears throat> medi gun i didn't see that i didn't even see that happen where he turned glitch into it he just kind of he just had it yeah i was just like oh that's okay he has a thing yeah Oh. And then he's like, there, a little puppy peptic. That's the best I can do. And uh, Frisket kind of looks a little better. Yeah. Yeah, he gets slightly less green. Yeah, so he's, did, yeah. actually, did we mention that, like, uh, Frisket has this, like, green hue to him now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we mentioned that he, he was green. Yeah. Greenish. Yeah. Clearly sick. Farting and burping everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Cecil gives him shit for treating the diner like a veterinary hospital, so they leave. <clears throat> He's a little bit back to his old self because he snarls at Bob. And yeah. uh, then they go, but where's Enzo? He's the only one that Frisket listens to. And they're like, go find Enzo, boy. Go on. And he kind of starts sniffing the ground, and he goes off to find Enzo. Yep. Presumably. And he finds him because Hack and Slash show up in a hover tank, holding him oh, captive. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, Enzo Enzo uh, shows up, and he yeah well, he's on a he's on a zip board. Yeah, uh, Frisk gets wandering the streets, and he looks a little bit rough. And Enzo comes on, and, and hey, Frisk, yeah, Hack and Slash grab him, like Christopher said, and the instead of just grabbing the sick dog. They they grab Enzo and kind of like, <laughs> like tr I guess presumably try to lure Frisket to their base. And to what we were talking about earlier, apparently this dog is like way stronger than, like maybe as strong as Megabyte, because as <laughs> they try to literally kidnap Enzo, uh, Frisket like bites onto the ramp. Yeah for the hover tank and like actually is like successfully like like keeping it from moving and i'm like hold on that's not how physics work yeah yeah <laughs> isn't that or is it i i don't know how dog it needs to get work. enough momentum so for it to get away and it's he's not letting it accelerate 
So and it's a hover tank. So actually, technically, that is how physics work. Good yeah, job, and really, Mr. like any <laughs> we, like we any, know what we're any, talking about. <laughs> anything like this can be explained away by the simple fact that this is the inside of a computer system. Yeah. So it is different <laughs> physics, and it's a cartoon. <laughs> but actually, that that does kind of make sense because its mass doesn't matter, the mass of the hover tank, because it's hovering. Right? So technically, right. it depends on the, the thrust versus the um, the mass of frisket. So, that makes mm -hmm. sense to me. Although they need to fix, they need better door hinges, because he rips off the the ramp, and they fly away. Yeah. He's a strong doggo. And then he just tosses this, like, like, 200 pound like ramp to the side and i'm like holy shit this dog that's not even the the coolest thing that he does no so then he runs off and then we cut yeah. then we cut to silicon him. tour yeah they lure him all the way there and this giant thing like slams down and digs him to the ground and like grabs him. This like giant containment box. It's like the thing in Jurassic Park, you know, in the beginning where they have like, the, the, yeah. the Velociraptor inside and they're, <laughs> yeah. all, they're all like prodding and yeah. Yeah, it's literally like that because they have all the binomes gather around and they have little electroshock like spears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is if Megabyte has the technology to just straight up like scoop up frisket like that like i i realize this device is attached to the silicon tour but yeah like it's he, on like a crane rig yeah but if he has this technology where he could just like straight up snatch frisket like why did he need to go through with this whole like kidnap enzo <clears throat> to I think it's frisket attached plan? To his, his crane <laughs> <laughs> well, all his toys are I think at the risk right of <laughs> I think at the risk of being noticed by anyone other than himself or anyone other than viral binomes. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Um yeah. if, if you have that kind of rig as much. <laughs> yeah, because if you have that kind of rig, I mean that'll that'll turn some. Well, notes. I mean they kidnapped Enzo in plain daylight, so I don't think yeah. he's concerned about like just blocks away from Dot's Diner. So yeah, that is kind of shady. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good point. <laughs> but for I just some think, reason, I, I guess I, all of his big toys are like inside of the Silicon Tour. I just think Megabyte's plan has more layers to it than are really necessary. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the case with him. It's oh, we get to see Igor, I think. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's got like a brick for a foot. <laughs> And he's wearing like a bunny slipper and, like, on the other foot. One of his ball joints is like throbbing and it's gross. <laughs> and it's on the top <laughs> it's part. It's on the top part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he's a one binome yeah. for anyone listening, which they're three cubes stacked one on top of each other. But like he's put together all weird and wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scrap, scrap bits from old man Pearson's, I bet. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. he uh, doesn't have any lines, but we also see Hair Doctor in the background in a few shots in this episode. Oh. Yes, do we? Yeah, where is he? Uh, we'll see oh, him in a little bit is. operating a uh, computer panel. Yeah. <laughs> Hair Doctor. Oh, right, that guy. No. Yeah. The only doctor. So they're there. they're fleshing out they're they're fleshing out some of the characters and you know it's not just sprites that are cool binomes can be cool too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like John. A binome can be anything he wants to be. Yeah. Except Even a mad guardian. scientist. <laughs> I like how they're like, like trying to stun Frisket with like complete. Like futility, incompetence. And <laughs> incompetence yeah. is a better word. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and um, Megabyte always does this. Like as soon as he does something himself, he does it properly. <clears throat> like I don't know why he has minions because it's, he enjoys it. But he comes over and he goes, "Ah, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself." And he grabs the container that Frisket is in <laughs> he and he just, just crushes it, shoves it into this tank. 
Yeah, into the tank they and were trying to like coax him into. Completely and he it. destroys the container. So. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. I guess. Okay, yeah. so I guess you're not worried about cutbacks or you know budgeting. Yeah, being oh, all like, not. we don't have time for this, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you do see the doctor there. Oh, and somehow Frisket is in like a, uh, like a Hannibal Lecter yeah, muzzle. Got a m- weird muzzle, yeah. <laughs> How'd they put that on him? Weird. Uh, um, magic. Yes. Reboot? <laughs> yeah. So we see a doctor moving some panels, and uh, it's like, what is that? Like a, a welder? There's there's something that's like electricity, and Frisket is like strapped. His feet are stuck into this thing, and Megabyte is like, the boy doesn't need to see this. He served his purpose. Dump him in the city limits. Yeah, and Enzo is all like, wait, 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 wait. Can't I just say goodbye? And Megabyte is all like, uh, well, no. No. what <laughs> <laughs> a <Sort of> dick. <laughs> uh, Gets all up in his face. Yeah, At least cra- he's not killing him. Cracked me up. Yeah. He's like, I'm sure you'll find something else to play with eventually. Yeah. And Enzo's like, maybe I will. And he finally grabs that stupid yo-yo we've been we've seen on his hip. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. There's like two halves of it on either side of him. Sorry, there's. Oh. Yeah. It, but that's what it turns out to be. And yeah. Was... Oh. So I he thought... starts yo-yoing, and Hack and Slash are like, "Wow, that is pretty cool." Yeah, yeah. What and is he's this like, magic that you possess? <laughs> I like your words, funny magic man. <laughs> or I like your funny words, magic man. There we go. That's the <laughs> meme. I like your words, magic man. Funny man. So then there's yo yo. Well, he's doing around oh, the world right. and like walking. He does like walk the, the dog most and all dope that. Ass, yeah, he does the most dope ass yo yo trick without I've ever a seen string. in the world. Without a string. Well, it's a it's a magno. It's a, a, a it's yo a, it's magno, magno yo yo. <laughs> a yo he, magno. A yo magno. I like that. <laughs> And that actually sounds literally... like it could have been a product in we, the 90s. It sounds like a 90s like magnetic yo-yo. Well, there there yeah. was a time in the 90s when yo-yos were a huge thing. Yes. Okay, speaking of... Yeah. I don't know you guys remember you yo-yo know this. balls? Oh, hell yeah, I had one of those. Yo-yo balls, yeah, those were cool. And they lit up and they made sparks and shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was like I, I was like the king of those ones that lit up. Oh, nice. Like, man, I loved them. Made sparks and like lights would like... Because they would use the uh momentum and like the energy from you like flicking it right yeah yeah i was all about yo-yos in the 90s i was that kid i actually kind of still remember the song from the yo-yo ball commercial hey really? man it's a yo-yo ball yeah, yeah it was yeah. like it's so much wow. fun and easy to do <laughs> but wherever it goes it comes back to you <laughs> that's right too yeah wow. yeah <laughs> 1993. Um, yeah, yeah. Good times. That just reminded me of like soccer boppers, soccer <laughs> boppers. Oh, soccer boppers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, in the great... commercial, it would say soccer, but the voice would say soccer. Yeah. It was weird. It was called both. I don't know why. More fun than a pillow fight. <laughs> Jeez. You know. I have to say it now. Beg, Blow them up. Put differ. your hand inside. Get ready to have the time of your life. Jeez, here we go. Sock and boppers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to finish. Yep, yep, yep. How does that stick in my head, but I can't remember, like, grade 10 math? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> for me, oh, yes, uh, for me, anyway. Yeah, we, we, we've discussed <laughs> this at length before. <laughs> so Enzo's, Enzo's doing all these these wicked tricks with his yo-yo and uh, with all without a string. It's one of those Magna yo-yos like we were going over. Yeah. And it's a bunch of he, levers. He, he tosses it at the, at the control panel. And then the yo-yo just kind of goes sentient for like a second <laughs> and it just knocks all the levers out of place. Yeah. That's some sorcery right there. I was like, wow, man, 
kids got skills. Yeah, and I guess that helps frisk it somehow because he like breaks free of his limb restraints. Yeah, it, it shuts everything off. I guess it was. Yeah, all... and he he like takes off his muzzle and he's like breaking free and Megabyte's like, "Must I do everything no. myself?" Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> you do, man." Frisk it. Frisket busts out and he knocks over Megabyte <laughs> under a pane of glass. Oh yeah, and uh, and roars like a fucking roar. like like Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, and like it's actually like quite horrifying. Hack and Slash <laughs> are scared shitless at this point, and he and Enzo go onto this floating elevator and they start heading down. Oh yeah. What a batch of dip switches. <laughs> uh, so then, yeah. you know, the... the, the go, uh, to go on. Yeah, sorry. Then then we enter, like, a weird, like, Scooby-Doo, like, chase scene. <laughs> By the way, the facilities underneath the Silicon Tor are huge. Oh, yeah. Like, kilometers and kilometers of, like, secret evil base. Of course. It's Canadian, so it's got to be kilometers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Hair doctor is chasing them with a gigantic syringe full of, full of, full of green liquid. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, fun- yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. Amazing. Oh, his um icon is green and blue. Yeah. <laughs> and they're they're running down these endless hallways, and two binomes have like like just straight up guns. Yeah, <laughs> they just point these guns at Enzo and Frisket, and then suddenly, like Air Doctor and other binomes are behind them. When literally 1.5 seconds ago, there was nobody behind them. Yeah, they're uh, they're quick apparently. Yeah, they're, they're quicker than Enzo and a a dog with super. What the heck? They shoot Frisket. What's going on here? Oh no, they 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 try and lasso him. <laughs> They try and wow, la- excuse me. They try and Jeffrey. lasso him. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Oh. Okay. Those guns shoot ropes onto him. So then Yeah. Enzo hops on then Frisket. Then he gets Frisket? Yeah. <laughs> Frisket starts dragging huh. them down the hallway. I feel like they should have had real guns. <laughs> like why are they trying to capture him? To get the, it, wait, hold up! They, Isn't this they, weird? Why they, do they need him alive? Well, they they think he still has the the unformat command in his stomach, <clears throat> right? But wouldn't shooting him with real guns? Do they have real guns? <laughs> I, I don't know. BS, well, they're shooting B, rope guns. B, B, too, BS and P. BS and P. But <laughs> why does he need to be alive? Oh, right, right. Yeah, because it's a kids B, show. BS and yeah. P. <laughs> ABC. So cutting him open Easiest with a torch. TV. <laughs> so cutting him open with a torch, a okay, but shooting a dog, no, that's too far. Hey, hey, I didn't write the show. <laughs> <laughs> I know producer. Uh, maybe you should have been. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would have been fun. Go back, go back in time, like the <laughs> T one thousand, and and produce this show. Yeah. Uh, so basically, they shoot him with these lasso guns things, like you'd see in like a in a vet or animal control. Right. And at first, it's just like screw that, get on my back, kid. And Enzo hops on him, and he just starts dragging four binomes behind him. Um, it's entertaining. Yeah, and then they break free, and yeah, all one by one. Yeah, quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's a good job. Yeah. Then they find themselves at a gigantic power source, it looks like. To which yep. Frisket chews up all the wires. Thereby. Oh, yeah. Shutting they, like, off. purposely cause some mischief. Yeah. Shutting some off mayhem. all the lights. And Megabytes, Megabyte comes to this impasse where there's, like, four different hallways. And he's looking <laughs> around. It's the classic, which way did they go? <laughs> which hallway I don't know how they lost them when uh, whatever I guess it's a very fast <laughs> very fast dog 
Yeah, I suppose. Strong and yeah, fast. So now he's, spooky he's a good boy, dark. damn it. <laughs> he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Megabyte is all like, oh yeah, they're at the uh, the the lighting controls or whatever power after them. Controls, or yeah. the power controls, yeah. So because they, they took out the, uh, the lighting, um, Megabyte just knows where they are now. So he sends his viral uh, viral binomes in pursuit. Yeah, they do a pincer movement. He's like, you go that way and I'll go this way and we'll cut them off. Yeah. Head them off at the pass. Oh, and then Enzo and Frisket stumble upon this room loaded with explosives and ammunition. Yeah, they come across like a, a munitions storage. Yeah. Like a weapon storage room, which is <clears throat> awfully convenient. And they're all full of lethal like weapons. Nuclear warheads. <laughs> but like, man, he's got like such a shit eating grin on his face too <laughs> when he points this like giant sniper rifle gun at them. <laughs> That's awesome. And the binomes yell, Backspace, backspace. The gun kind of reminds me of the um the rail cannon from the original Robocop film. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this this rail cannon sh- shoots and they run away and it shoots a life yeah. raft. Mark's B <laughs> Mark, it actually says BSNP approved. On the life raft. Oh, oh that, good cat. I, yeah, I didn't notice <laughs> so that earlier. Good. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so it shoots a I, life raft I at love, them. I love when Enzo's pointing this this weapon at them. Frisket just kind of looks at them and then quickly nods his head like, yeah, this is happening. You better run. I, yeah. I just love that little comic relief there. So they run away, but when he shoots them, he shoots a life raft at them, and the life raft actually lands on them. <laughs> yeah. And they all push it above their head with their like little scepter. What are those like tasers, cattle prod mm-hmm. things? Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. And they have, like this batons. unimpressed look on their face. Oh yeah. And then yeah. they look surprised, and then like Frisket is on an amp. It almost looks like it looks like a guitar amp of some kind. <laughs> right? Yeah, Thank kind you. of. It kind of looks like an amp, and he slams his foot down, and it it shoots real missiles at him. Yeah, yeah. It's lo- It's loaded up with nine missiles, but uh, right on the front of it, it says "Do not taunt." Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Like straight up, like underneath the uh, the top, because it's it's nine missiles. It's three rows of three underneath the uh, the top row of missiles. It says, "Do not taunt." The f- you guys are catching a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do not this, taunt. This one I caught earlier when I was watching it. So the viral binomes are underneath this raft, shielding themselves from the missiles, which of course works in cartoons only. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> because he so, them. Yeah, yeah. So they're running again, BSNP. I uh they bump when, the into... missiles, when, when the missiles hit them, they just kind of like bounce around. <laughs> yeah. Car- yeah, they cartoon kind of like ah. <laughs> like you take damage in a video game and you lose a heart. So <laughs> yeah. They they uh they round they the bump corner. into a naked a naked mega oh, megabyte. Again with the and naked. He's like <laughs> Well, is he ever clothed? I rest my case. <laughs> they they happen a cron they happen upon a large naked muscular blue man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they bump into him, and he has his hands on his hips, and he's like, "Running away, are we?" <laughs> and they like in unison shake their head because they're still under this <clears throat> stupid raft. Yeah. And they're like, "No, not us, no way." And I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, you got to start paying like more competent people to work for you." <laughs> yeah, minions. Yeah, and then they uh, they, they uh, turn around. Yeah, they turn, they turn around, around and start running around, and then they run up onto the wall at one point, and then hilariously enough, <laughs> one of uh, Megabyte's hover tanks just like smashes, smashes right into them, them against the wall <laughs> and crushes them <laughs> like they're flattened. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> and then we see that it's Enzo uh, trying to fly this uh, this hover tank, which is pretty oh, yeah, ballsy. He that is yeah. ballsy, like, and he's scared kid. doing it. He's scared doing it, but he's somehow managing, and he actually slams Megatron against Megabyte. 
the the wall. Damn it! <laughs> Mega bucket against the wall. Yeah, but like yeah. he's fine. He just pushes oh, yeah. it off of him, and he's like completely fine. And Megabyte uh, starts running out. No, I've never seen anything like this. I've seen him bound up the elevator shaft, like in the first episode. But yeah. this kind of scared me the first time I saw it because I was like, "Holy crap, that's stupid fast!" He's running because he starts chasing the hover tank. Oh, yeah, this he is looks so rad. And he looks pretty looks monstrous awesome. here. Yeah, and then yeah, he, th- he's so rad. And then he. Um, th- Oh, this gets like on. popping out of the top. Yeah, like he's he's popping out of the top like top like a dog. Yeah, and is like <laughs> it's the wind is like knocking at his tongue and his ears, yeah. like, flap, yeah. flapping back. Typical, They're having a great old time. Yeah. Seems really dangerous. Well, you know, should probably tuck his head in. But he's... yeah, um, Megabyte chasing him, going like a hundred k is some shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is rad. And his like acrobatic maneuver he uses to get ahead of them is. Is great, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I, uh, um, hack and slash yeah. appear in front of them, and this is hilarious. I'm like, yeah. okay, <laughs> <laughs> Christopher. Like, so, what were they hoping is, to do? What were they hoping to accomplish by doing this? Okay, so I'm so, I'm at odds with this one. Go go ahead, Christopher. So the hover tank is like charging toward the. It was just like speeding directly toward them, and hack and slash like are like kind of angled facing one another and they like look at each other and then look at the tank and then look at each other again and then look at the tank and they both each put a hand up to gesture stop. (laughs) Or, or, yeah, to gesture stop. Or what I'm thinking, to physically stop them. Because in the past, we've seen them lift up an entire bridge and destroy it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like, so there's two things that's going to happen here. One, they'll extend their arms. Do you remember their arms can like extend? Yeah. And they'll try to like physically like use momentum to like slow it down, or they'll just shatter into a thousand pieces. Yeah. I was wrong, and neither of those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because um, they're gesturing stop, like Christopher says, or maybe they're going to stop it physically themselves, and. Then at the last second, they like look at each other and then just jump out of the way. Yeah, uh, because move. of the because of the fact that they choose to just like dive out of the way. Like I think they were just doing a stop gesture. Y- yeah, <laughs> well, I guess what else are they gonna do? Yeah, fall apart. Yeah, and and this is when um, a rad uh, moment happens. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, right. Megabyte runs. He like very elegantly, as if he's diving off of like a diving board. Puts his oh, feet yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember this? He puts his feet together. This is like cemented in my memory for some reason. He puts his feet together and like dives like like an elegant like like uh like Olympian, and he flies so fast and so high he dives in front of Enzo in the hover tank. Yeah, his uh, his arms and legs are all like just straight back and his head is facing forward. He's like, he looks like the human bullet here. Uh, He's yeah. human bulleting. Yeah, it's rad. Yeah. <laughs> I really like, I really like how animalistic <laughs> and strong and like bestial this, uh, this bestial. metallic naked man is. Bestial, yeah. I like that word. That's a good, that's a good word. <laughs> There's a lot of bestial critters in this episode. <clears throat> I, I, I gotta say, I gotta take back what I said earlier. It's actually a great episode for like for like comedic um moments. Yeah. It's like now that I'm I'm enjoying it now that I'm talking going about through it. With it you guys. I'm kinda like I actually really like this episode for some, you know, certain parts. The plot alone, yeah. Anyways. Uh Luke, I just noticed that uh Frisket has a gold tooth. Yeah. This is the first episode I noticed that. His front left bottom tooth. Is like copper or gold. Yeah. Cool. Oh, never noticed funny. that before. I've never noticed that. Uh, I did know that, but I just noticed it this episode now that we've been rewatching it. Mm. Like, I, I don't recall it earlier in any, any of the other episodes. <clears throat> so, a yeah. little cool detail. So, I wonder how he got it. So, yeah, uh, Frisket is growling at Megabyte. And uh, ducks his head back in. Yeah, and Megabyte is all like, "Oh, this is why I have minions." 
Well, we forgot, Christopher, that he actually stops. Yeah, he catches it. The the hover tank. Like yeah, you know? he, he actually like stands oh, okay, in front yeah, of it yeah. and like right. It Sorry, slams I got ahead into... of myself. Sorry. Yeah, no. Well, this part's cool. That's why I'm mentioning it. Like he he stands in front of it like we thought um um slap and stick were going to do. <laughs> and the concrete underneath his feet like starts it's like straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's like spreading and he's like digging his like like bare monstrous feet into the ground and he with his like sheer strength he just stops this like <clears throat> hover tank from going down the hall and he starts slamming it around like bashing it like left and right against the walls and shake them out yeah trying to like <laughs> shake them out of the the tank and i'm like wow this guy this guy could f people up if he really wanted to mm-hmm. I just he's wanna, way I, too nice i, I just want to point <laughs> out a naked man could not do that because it would hurt well he he's no ordinary naked man well there you go there you go <laughs> he tosses the yeah the the hover tank behind him and and that's when he's like um he calls him a cur yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like i i want my unformat command cur and i don't know why he just doesn't run up and grab them he just watches as they like jump into a it looks like, like it looks like, like a mail shoot or something because yeah. it's, it's it's vacuumed yeah, and, and there's a standoff between Frisket and Megabyte. And I'm like, oh shit, who's oh, going to yeah, win? Yeah. And this is what Christopher says. He's like, this is why I have um, underlings. <laughs> I have underlings for just such an occasion. Hack and slash sigh. Yeah, yeah. And like argue a bit. And off screen, they just kind of like roll over towards Frisket. And then the next scene, it. It shows them in pieces, and they're like, "Sorry, boss." <laughs> Some underlings. Yeah, it's good to know he's got such a good staff, such a good competent staff to do all his bidding. Well, I said that they were completely incompetent, but you said, "Well, they're good muscle." Yeah, that is true. They're good muscle, and I'm like, "Are they?" But they're good know, at breaking bridges. <laughs> yeah, that that is true. But they're not good at standing up to dogs. So, <laughs> or or Bob or. Enzo or whatever crushes them into a million pieces. They're good at grabbing Enzo. No. What happens here? They're on a crane? So, kind of... Oh, right. Yeah. Pans out to the outside of Silicon Tor, and it kind of like goes around as if running upstairs. Um, but they're they're traveling up this mail chute. I'm guessing that's what it was. Uh, or something. Or something. Uh, you know what? It was let's, probably let's, air let's, conditioning. Let's, Air yeah, let's jump to let's jump ahead a bit. Basically, they get onto the crane, they climb up the crane, they no, extend no, the uh, crane. No, no, uh, just is before they crane? get. Well, no, it is, but uh, just before they get onto the crane, though, they're on top of the silicon tour. Yeah, and uh, Frisket like kind of strains a little bit, and then it's implied <laughs> that he basically shits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He farts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I brought that up because that that will that will be important in a couple right. of minutes here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so when they when they slide down Enzo slides down this like this thing off of the crane, this like wire scoop that comes down after apparently he can control like heavy equipment. Well so good for him. W- w- one thing that we're not noticing here, uh it actually just occurred to me. Is that he was green mm. earlier? Now this altercation and the basement of the Silicon Tor, he's slowly getting better. And now we're up on yeah. the now we're up on the crane, and he shits it out. Yeah, and he's looking a hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was oh he did it. Interesting, interesting detail that I'm just now noticing. And um, very clever Enzo guys. Slides. It yeah. is very clever. <laughs> his uh-huh. body was able to pass it. Yep. Yeah. Puppy Thanks pepsi. to Bob and his peppy puppy peptic. <laughs> yeah. Puppy pectic pick the peck of pickled puppers. <laughs> Good Pepto Lord. frisk ball. Pickled puppers. No frisk ball. Oh my god. <laughs> Pepto. Pepto puppy power. <laughs> 
Um, uh, all right. Yeah, so Frisket can jump down from like a 20 story height and be fine, apparently. Yeah. And it shows, yeah. And he's like, oh, I guess you could just jump down, Frisket. And then it cuts to them walking back towards the diner. And like Enzo is flat out pimp walking. Like he's feeling like a thousand oh, dude, yeah. million bucks. And he's like pimp walking. It's so weird. Do you remember him like walking when he passes um Dot and oh. <laughs> Bob? He's like straight up pimp walking. Well, yeah, so look weird. at him go. I'm looking at it right. Now. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, around the twenty one forty mark. Yeah, yeah, he's just strutting. <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't like like music playing in the background. The animation is so strange, too. It's like Christopher and I noticed the strange ass walking animations. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's always different, too. I used to, as a kid, like he... sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, as a kid, I thought it was like super cool. You know, it's just not how people walk, but it's how reboot <laughs> people walk, but it's not consistent. No, <laughs> actually, yeah, the. I've seen him walk before, like in previous episodes, where he'll kind of have that same kind of stiff lope about him. Anyways, carry on. The the way he's walking here, <laughs> like he looks like he's being animated by strings that are pulling him forward, <laughs> as opposed like to strings. Marionette. Like yeah, like a marionette, but like not like strings like going up above him but like strings in front of him like just pulling him forward i keep rewinding and watching this part over and over it's dumb I i've like done uh, <laughs> you too i've done it like four times now it's <laughs> <laughs> what oh. a pimp walk man i can't get over okay. that okay also in this bit like why <laughs> watch watch the bit where bob and dot turn around and Dot is all like, Enzo, are you okay? Watch the, like, hilarious flail that Dot does here. When she turns around? Yeah. Yeah, it's to catch her, her balance, right? Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> 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 like, As somebody who skateboards, I know that that, that like, is animated whoa. really well. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's like, I'm just heading back to the diner. Pimp walking, see you there. <laughs> and he's like, Where were you guys going? They're like, We were going to save you. And I was <laughs> like, From what? From Megabyte. What happened? Oh, nothing. Me and good old Frisket here just kicked Megabyte's tail. That's all. Megabyte's big yeah, bitmap. Bit oh, bitmap, right. <laughs> right, right. And so th- here's my subtitle it says, uh, Just kicked Megabyte's bitmap. That's all. And then in brackets, it says growling in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm like, th- thanks, subtitles. That's, growling in agreement. I mean, he is, that's but. That's a thing, apparently. Wow. <sighs> so Bob is all like, well, good dog then. Yeah, well, Bob goes tries like, to pet him, Frisket. And Frisk gets back to like growling and. Not letting him. That's our frisket. Yeah. And Enzo is like, track. "Is like a uh, great dog." Yeah, because he's like, oh, "Oh, sorry, good, good dog." And Enzo's like, "No, great dog." And then he farts <laughs> again, and they like give each other the corniest fucking look. <laughs> I like how Enzo is like basically like, um, "Excuse me, motherfucker." Like <laughs> he is a great dog. Well, this episode has proven that. <laughs> uh, with his spiked collar and his gold tooth man that that is the exact kind of dog a pimp would have too <laughs> like yeah. two spiked collars and a gold tooth on his fucking dog you know how expensive that, that would be so much more expensive than getting a gold tooth cap on a human oh yeah, oh, abs- yeah. <laughs> uh, as someone who has to pay for dental surgery for his cat uh, yeah uh, let me tell you yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so we're back at the Silicon Tour. Uh, Hack oh, yeah. and Slash are all like, we will not fail him. They're all ready to go take charge and uh, complete are they the mission. On the crane? Or are they in the crane? Yeah, they're on the crane. <laughs> on the top, yeah. Megabyte walks up and you hear this. Oh, I didn't even notice that. And <laughs> he like looks at the bottom of his foot. And he's just like, never mind. 
I've already <laughs> found it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is this classic. Yeah. Okay. Done. Episode. You know. Over. <laughs> he stepped in doggy poo. Yeah. And he yells, "Somebody delete that and clean up all this mess." Delete that and clean up this mess. <laughs> this typical megabyte. I'm I'm yeah. sure this was Ow. hilarious to me when I was nine. I'm sure but... it was very funny to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> it still now... it still cracks me up. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And uh, yep, that's the episode. Dun, dun, so dun, dun, here's dun, dun, the dun. thing: he says, "Somebody delete that." So is the unformat command like useless now? Yeah, apparently. Or... Uh, apparently, unformat command can't delete poo. Because he's like, oh, somebody delete that, and he just walks away. So I'm guessing, like, Frisket, like, destroyed it? Yeah, Frisket's body digesting it, like, kind of fucked it up, I guess. Like, yeah, rendered it because unusable. That's the impression I got. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, And considering that, that. This, this is the end of the episode, like, we have nothing else to go on but that, so... Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. It ends with Megabyte stepping in poo. And limping away as he makes these like gross like <laughs> sounds. <laughs> as he Don't want to animate poo. Nope. 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 So yeah, apparently poo exists in this world. Yeah, apparently uh, everybody poops in uh one buddy. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, in, in, in a computer. Questions we didn't know we needed an answer for. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, now that we know, I'm not entirely sure we did need answers for them. <laughs> but regardless, we got them. Yeah, so they all poo. Yep. Yeah. Would... So, yeah, so that has been episode six of Reboot uh, in the Belly of the Beast. Uh, Aiden, what are your final thoughts? Uh, well, I'm kind of with you on the fact that this is not one of my favorite episodes, but th there were definitely some scenes in there that, that I do love, uh, like the whole thing at the base of Silicon Tor. And, uh, I would also like to point out that this is the only episode so far, so far, um, without a game. Uh, there was, there was no game. Uh, is it? Medusa Bug didn't have a game that factored into the plot, but a Until game the did, very end. Yeah, yeah, but a GameCube did show up at the very end of the episode. Yeah, but yeah. technically true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but this is the first but episode is, where a game hasn't hasn't like been announced. Yeah, that that, yeah. that that's more what I meant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, yeah. I, I, what else? Other than that, yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think it's a very clever episode. I uh, again, not 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 one of my faves. Clever. But, uh, yeah, I think it was pretty clever. It's clever. I thought it was. I thought I thought it was clever. Yes. <laughs> it was fun. It was clever. It was fun. It was reboot. I, I, I lo that's a good summary. Lo it was loved clever, it as it was a kid. Fun, it was reboot. Loved it as a kid. Uh, picking it apart as an adult, it's not not so great. But you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What you gonna do? Belly of the Beast. BS and P. It was, it was fun, okay? Just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cal, what did you think? It had some moments. I always like a good megabyte chase. Chase scene. Oh, yeah. Frisket um, farting and burping everywhere. Is, I, to me, as a kid, I th probably thought that was hilarious. But I, I mostly just sighed. <laughs> Fired and belching and poo. Yeah. Jokes. Yeah. I am right there with you on that. And uh, and um but it was cool to see like you know, a mad scientist and Igor and some extra like um binomes that had no lines. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that was in the belly of the beast. Sweet. Uh, I'm just going to summarize my thoughts uh, by not offering any sort of 
critical analysis at all and just say, I thought this episode sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like this episode even slightly. Wah, wah. Uh, but we will be back next week with episode seven of Reboot, the Crim- Crimson Binome, which is an episode... Favorite. Yes, and it's an episode that I have not seen for many years, but I do know was an episode I was very fond of when I was younger. Oh, yes. Yeah, he looks, f- the the thumbnail for it looks very familiar, but I can't actually recall since I've never watched it since it was on TV until mm. this podcast. Well, we'll find out next week then. Yeah. Awesome. Until then. So, uh, we have a website that I set up now. You can go to www.alphanumericpodcast.ca. It's a pretty crappy looking website because I'm not very good at web design at all. But it's functional. There's a little about me section. Uh, You can listen to all of the episodes of this podcast uh, in a embedded player on the website. You can also find social media links uh, the, to the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash alphanumeric podcast, a contact us button, which uh, leads to the email address, alphanumeric <laughs> pod. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a button. It's just a button. Yeah, yeah basically. We wanted a button. Alphanumer- Have you checked it out? Hmm? Have you checked out the the website, I have, Christopher? I, I have not checked it out yet. They're pretty. Out. It's a blast from the past. They're, they're <laughs> they do exactly what it's like the he wants them to do. Okay. Yes. Oh no yeah. way! <laughs> they, they look <laughs> like they look like nineties like websites. Simpatico. Yeah. Take yeah. take that for. <laughs> I for will. What it is. I will have a look at this. <laughs> All right. So yeah, listeners, go check that out. Uh, and yeah, if you want, send us an email, alphanumericpod, P-O-D, at outlook.com. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Instagram. Uh, Instagram.com slash Christopher Siege, S-I-E-G-E. So like I said, we will be back uh, next week with the Crimson Binome. And until then, game over. Re- reboot? And stay frosty. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Game over. Alpha numeric.